A warm welcome from ITC headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. My name is Mathieu Lamolle and I coordinate the work on the Standards Map database. And today is exciting for me to present the uh, IDH Floriculture Sustainability Initiative tool, the Equi tool that we have built in collaboration over the last few months with IDH and his team. IDH and ITC have been uh, developing the Floriculture Sustainability Initiative uh, Equi tool as a means for traders, producers, but also buyers and retailers to understand better the scope and uh, comparing, contrasting sustainability programs in the floriculture sector worldwide. ITC is very proud to have the tool now being released as using Global Gap for the environmental perspective as the main reference point to assess equivalence of related standards to floriculture. And on social compliance, the GSCP has been used as the, being the meta standard, or so to speak, the benchmark to assess the standards. As you will see in a moment in the demonstration, the tool will be driving the users through a very logical journey. You would identify the relevant standards per your country of interest or region, a type of floriculture product that you're dealing with from a trader's perspective, buyer or retailer, and understand the scope of the standards that pertain to this context. The journey will start with identifying those standards and then bring you as a user to the next step, which is basically identifying the main core elements and characteristics of those standards. How are they structured? What are their requirements? How is the modus operandi of these standards and how do they relate to sustainable development goals and impacts? And last but not least, the user is then brought to the Equitool module. The Equitool per se, which is the center of this customized platform. The Equitool is meant to address the core um, issue around what are the differences and the commonalities between standards applicable to floriculture. Global Gap has been used as being the reference for environmental concerns, the reference as being a baseline requirement, so ensuring that best practices and good agriculture concerns are taken into consideration in certification. That is for environment. And then on the social side, GSCP, the Global Social Compliance Program, has been used as a meta standard, as a meta initiative through which standards would be assessed. By assessment, we look at commonalities and differences, addressing the same issues to the right level of detail. It is not yet a value judgment. It is not to say one standard is necessarily much better than another one. It is rather assessing the level of equivalence between the scope of these standards. You will also review information about the governance structure of these standards and their potential outreach to producers and exporters, hence the sustainability impacts that you may expect. But without further ado, let's just have a look at the tool and how it looks like. Here is the homepage of the FSI web portal. It can be accessed at www.standardsmap.org FSI. From the homepage, users can click the Enter button and enter the application and module to start comparing and reviewing floriculture standards. The portal is structured around three main components or modules. It starts by an identify module where users can narrow down their search according to certain filters and identify relevant standards. Then perform a quick scan review of their main characteristics, requirements, modus operandi, audit processes, and then finally run some comparisons. From any page in the website, you could access the FSI booklet. This is a, a direct link to a PDF file where you have more information about the FSI initiative per se. Uh, a guided tour. The guided tour is basically when clicking on it using the Google technology to review highlights on some parts of the web page. What do you see on the screen? The navigation bar, the selection menus, list of standards, and so on and so forth. So the user actually has this possibility to check on any page of the portal what is on the screen and how can they navigate the portal. There is a view tutorial which is also a short video highlighting how the portal functions and how the users can navigate and then some partners information button. So 
in this scenario, say you would like to identify some floriculture standards that are only focusing on flowers and not the plants or trees, bulbs, but flowers in particular, and producing country could be somewhere in Latin America, Europe. I mean, you just select from those uh, those different regions and filters if that is uh, a necessity for you. Okay, so as an example, I could select Colombia. This is my uh, selection. And as you see, as we are entering filters, the number of standards are being reduced. So the, the, the list that is provided on the screen pertains to your selected criteria. You could also use a destination market, additional filter, or even some more options focusing on the scope of the standards. Do they really address some issues around biodiversity, child labor, etc.? From your list, which is uh, portrayed in this identify module, it is up to you now to make a selection of some initiatives that you would like to review and maybe compare over time. So it is really up to the user to make a selection by reviewing from the list what would be interesting standards to review. So for this demo exercise, I am just making some examples here of standards that I would like to run side by side. So this is my manual selection. As a user, once I have my selection made uh, in this first step, I can navigate to the next module, which is the quick scan. So when you click quick scan, the page loads a, a kind of a main characteristics overview of all the selected initiatives. Their logos would appear on the top bar here, so you know which one you are reviewing. It is one at a time. So in this case, it starts with Flow Verde. And as you can see, we will have an overview of the Flow Verde standard system. How does it work? Who are they? Where do they operate? Assurance systems and audits. You have a full vertical menu to review information on these standards. By just clicking on the next logo, you will have the page automatically refreshed with information on the next standards. The quick scan module is composed of this menu, the vertical one, so this is fair trade information. As you see, if we go down the page, you have more information about where do the standards operate, how are audit process uh, organized, and who has the who is the main target user group of the standard. All these pieces of information are displayed in the page, but you also have, as importantly, a tab which is horizontally presented about the requirements. So what is in the fair trade standard? By hitting the requirements tab, you will generate a set of three graphics that represent fair trade. The first one is about the requirements breakdown. So it's basically a pie chart showing out of the 100% of the fair trade content standards, what is there? A lot is about social issues, like 42% of the standards really focuses on social issues. They have a very big component on environment, but still also uh, cover issues around management, quality, and ethics. From the pie chart, you can check it in terms of absolute numbers of requirements, hotspots that are identified in the ITC standards map, so in this case 65 under environment, 83 for social, 23 management, 22 quality, and 4 on ethics. The last graphic on the spider graph shows you those categories in terms of a, a, just a, a different display. Importantly as well, the requirements can be presented in different ways. So you are invited to use the drop-down menu here and try to display other types of information, like degrees of obligation. As we all know, the standards have different ways to address their components uh, in the audit process. Some elements are more important than others. So there are some requirements that are for immediate actions. In this case, you see those are the green ones, uh, versus elements that are more like recommendations or objectives to be met within five years. So the graphics can all be displayed as well around degree of obligation and not just in terms of what kind of requirements do they have. So this graphic here represents for all five dimensions, environment, social, management, quality, but also ethics, what are 
what is the spread between immediate requirements that require immediate action versus long-term or medium-term type objectives within five years or three years or one year. Uh, there are a number of options that you can play with in the uh, representing the uh, the standards requirements. So degree of obligation is is uh, the second one. Criticality level is really about is this a major must or a minor must? Mostly focusing on corrective actions and how the standard will then uh, perform the the audit when it's about a very critical issue that has been uh, missed by the producer. Uh, explicitly uh, covered or non-explicitly covered, some standards have different ways to address issues and sometimes are not extremely explicit about it. So again, this is another way to rep uh, represent the data. And then degrees of implementation, like how is this really covered in terms of measuring a certain situation, putting forward an action plan for improvement or just promoting a good practice. So all those pieces of information enable you to portray any standard that has been selected. So fair trade was selected here, but if I go back to the global gap floriculture, uh, then of course the portray and the information will be slightly different. As well as Flor Verde, by just generating the graphs, you will see what is the main focus of the Flor Verde standard and how are they organized. Below the graphics, you have the full details about the standards requirements. So this is organized in a tree structure. The tree structure is about environment and then you have the social management, quality and ethics. So this is like the common structure around the five dimensions of the standards map backend database. Would you like to review how Flow Verde addresses issues around water? Just click on the water, it opens the chapter and again here you will have all the criteria with their associated time frame and degrees of obligation. So is this for immediate action or kind of a recommendation or long-term objective? The description would then come to you with information about where can you find it in the, in the standard document. In terms of the flow verde, you have the information in both Spanish and English and the website link that indicates where you can find more details as well as some localization of the details within the document. So just go directly to point 6.5. Would you like to check water issues in Flow Verde? So any data point that has been referenced in the, uh, the backend database can be then accessed here in the quick scan module. As a short summary, quick scan is about identifying the main characteristics of the standards, how do they work, and what are their requirements. The next step of the journey for the users is actually to make some comparisons. And so you would hit the compare button and the compare button will present basically the standards using the same, uh, same technolo technology and same uh, user journey. So you first indicate in a, you first receive in a graphic the standards that are put side by side. So you have uh, the various spider graphs showing standards on top of each other, the bar charts. Uh, as you can see, you can easily modify the graphics and run different types of perspectives by just selecting whatever option suits you better in the graphic design. The way it is actually currently organized is really from a perspective where you would like to assess if the standards do cover more or less the same issues what are their overlap or commonalities? And then if some standards cover additional issues, then what are they? So this is really the meaning of making those comparisons as efficient as possible. Once again, you have the requirements that are organized side by side around the five dimensions. So from environment, social management, quality and ethics. Now in the context of the FSI, would you just focus on environment well, global gap floriculture is provided as a potential baseline to make your comparisons. So not taking all standards like this side by side, but really saying, why won't you uh, make some analysis around the scope of the standards across uh, global gap? So you see here global gap is provided as a, as a starting point for the fixed reference. So the reference is basically you assess the standards against a decided selected reference. Global gap flower culture is for many retailers and brands the baseline necessary type standard to be met when it comes to 
good environmental practices. So you can just go and make your an assessment, but would you like to make an assessment against another reference like MPS or Rainforest Alliance, Flo Verde? Well, it's really up to you to select them. This list here is automatically updated in the tool as you have selected in the first module, identify the relevant standards. So clicking on go, the, the, the portal will present an analysis of the various standards across global gap. So here we are. The first graphic, as you can see here, is now reviewing what are the areas from global gap that are fully covered by the standard the ones that seem not to be covered, maybe some of the recommendations of the global gap that are not necessarily covered by the standards, but then also what additional criteria are covered by those standards, because some of them go much beyond global gap, some of them just go across global gap, and this is where you will be able to see that. Obviously, the details below will also enable you to go from a tab perspective, so a table, where you will see easily the scope of the various standards across global gap or across the selected reference. Some filters can be applied as well to just display those information and criteria that are in global gap. So yes or no, do we have all of them covered or displaying all the data. The graphics are uh, interactive. So we, you like to make just a comparison across water and biodiversity as you can see you just remove from the legend those items that are not of interest or you add them and the graphic gets automatically uh, updated under social tab the request to itc was to use the gscp reference codes as a as a start for the assessment the gscp reference code is therefore presented as the meta standard, the meta reference for social compliance, and this is the starting baseline. So here you see we have GSCP, this is provided as the starting point. Would you like to make another reference? Of course you can, but the main purpose here is to say what are the standards uh, from a quick scan perspective? Do they really cover some of the key elements of the GSCP reference codes, yes or no? So again, click go, and the platform generates the new graphics, so it it's loads the page. And here we go with the assessment using, uh, if, we, if you want the same type of question, do the standards cover everything which is required in standards um, in the uh, GSCP reference codes, yes or no? Uh, this graphic for MPS ABC shows that none of the standards are covered which would have taken MPS SQ, the socially qualified standard of MPS, to actually look at the data. It doesn't make much sense to have MPS reviewed against GSCP. Flow Verde, Global Gap, uh, those are the selected standards. And the same application that below, you will have all these uh, criteria covered by the reference and the analysis being made, yes or no, are they fully covered? Last but not least, a comparison of the standards cannot be made only on the content requirements, but it can also be made on the uh, uh, standards processes. So audit, governance, how are the standards working together? And so this is where we have this possibility by clicking on the about the standards to review such information and have all the data organized around five dimensions, audits, claims, support, the standard itself and the governance. By opening up the chapters, you will see all the information on how the standards are uh, organized. And as you can see, when you browse the, the mouse over a certain criterion, you will have a definition coming and the definition presents you what are the different uh, pieces of information that appear on the screen.
So in terms of the next steps, the uh, hotspot analysis uh, will be further uh, analyzed in the, in the tool, say for instance water dependencies according to certain regions like Latin America or Africa. So the, the next steps of development of the tool will be articulated on those particular hotspots identified in certain uh, regions of the world according to certain uh, sustainability hotspots like water or, or social. Uh, we really hope that this tool will be useful to help you navigate the, the fast-changing landscape on sustainability standards in floriculture. And of course, we remain at your disposal to further develop the tool according to your needs as brands and retailers and as producers' associations. So thank you very much for your attention, and we look forward to working with you again uh, very soon. Thank you. The International Trade Center. Export impact for good.